Miles Morales is hitting the streets of New York once again, but what new threats will he face both in his personal life and in his super life? Well, let's hop into the pages of Miles Morales Spider-Man number one. A brand new fresh star courtesy of Cody Ziegler and find out together, shall we? So then, as we join the book proper, we're introduced to a brand new character named Raneem. She's a nice lady, she helps feed the local homeless community, chop cheese is no less because, I mean, hey, that is the part of New York we're in after all. It's while walking away from her newest good deed, though, Raneem Neem ends up coming upon an armored car robbery being perpetrated by the original Scorpion, Matt Gargan. Luckily, Miles Morales in his role as Spider-Man is able to swoop on in and save the girl before she ends up becoming a casualty of this brazen daylight robbery. Also, hey, Miles is back in his classic costume, everyone. I did not read to the end of that solid in a mid-run, so I'm not sure if it happened there or if he's showing up back in it for the first time here. I will just say for the record that I am happy to see it once again. And just in time for the new Spider-Verse, movie. Funny how that always seems to happen, huh? Scorpion loudly declares his dissatisfaction for having to dust it up with the newer, younger Spider-Man. After all, Scorpion was fighting the original Webhead all the way back in 65. Miles certainly shares a lot of similarities with the original Spider-Man. He can quip with the best of them, but he has some new skills too, like an extra set of powers that allow him to turn Gargan's lights off once again. It's at this moment too, Miles ends up coming face to face with the newest group of super cops who have been tasked with keeping peace in the greater New York area. Again, I know most of the Marvel books don't even bother to mention this anymore, but ever since the events of Devil's Reign, it's technically been illegal to operate as a superhero in New York. I mean, more illegal than being a vigilante is normally illegal. Though, let's face it, by this point, Miles should probably be used to this. He just got done dealing with all of those cradle goons who are also a military police outfit trying to stamp out young superheroism. Gao, the leader of this group, group is willing to cut Miles some slack, this time at least, because he did ultimately manage to defeat the Scorpion and save some lives. Though, Miles is also not afraid to get into this lady's face, saying, why does it always feel like the ultra-militarized police always find their way to Miles' neighborhood before anyone else's? Miles is forced to rush to school, where he meets up with his friend Ganky. He's unfortunately late once again for class, something that is becoming a very unfortunate trend recently in Miles' life. Worse still, not only is Miles going to have to attend class very late today, he's going to have to do so with a very pronounced black eye, one that he can't easily explain away like his absences. In fact, one of Miles' professors has really had it up to here with him and singles him out in class, saying that maybe Miles is flexing too much of his privilege recently. After all, in a nice bit of continuity, we're reminded that Miles is only at this big fancy school because he won a lottery. I mean, young man, if you're not going to show up to class on time or at all, perhaps your position in this fine academy would be better suited to someone who will. <laughs> Miles actually tries to stand up for himself during this exchange, but all it ends up doing is getting himself expelled. So yeah, pretty crappy day for Miles so far. Miles opts to go for a swing as Spider-Man to clear his head, but he knows that he's going to eventually have to have a very uncomfortable conversation with his parents, who are admittedly very supportive of Miles as always, and who are more than happy to listen to Miles' problems. He actually has a mini breakdown here that is, you know what, honestly really damn really relatable, wherein he says that he feels like he's just spinning out the things that used to be easy are so hard now that he can't get a grasp of his super life and his personal life. Normally in situations like this, Miles would have someone like, say, Peter Parker to lean on in these hard times, but it seems that Peter has ghosted him, much like Peter has ghosted all of his other friends over in the main Spider-Man book. Miles is about to head home for the night and take his grounding like a man when he ends up responding to a break and enter. Turns out it's Bumbler, everybody, a lame in insect-themed villain that Miles had dealt with previously. Only, upon this second meeting, Bumbler isn't nearly as lame as he used to be. Someone has clearly upgraded his gear, and now he's actually able to keep up with Spider-Man and give him a hard time. But, you know, not too hard a time. This is still Miles we're dealing with here. Spider-Man ultimately wins the day, but even after Bumbler is beaten, he can't seem to hold back from kicking his ass. In fact, Miles kinda scares himself. He's not used to lashing out like this. There's surely something wrong with him, something that he can't quite deal with on his own, but something that he's definitely going to have to before someone, or even himself, gets hurt. Now, as the comic comes to a close, we check back on in with Raneem, the girl that Miles had saved at the beginning of this story. She goes back to her place, and we see that she has a massive spy array set up. She's been keeping a close eye on Miles, his friends, his family, his enemies, and because of that, she essentially knows all of his secrets. But why, though, is the big mystery as the comic comes to a close. 
And so that was Miles Morales Spider-Man issue number one, everybody. And I gotta say, Cody Ziegler offers up a very different sort of Spider-Man story than I've been used to reading in the last little bit. Normally, when you read a brand new number one in a long-running series like this, writers bend over backwards to try and hook you as quickly as they can. They try and inflate the stakes. They try and blind you with shock and spectacle, but Ziegler doesn't do that. In fact, he goes the other direction completely by telling a slow burn, much more personal, much more human, much more miles out of the costume centric story, and I like that. In fact, if we're being honest, it's kind of everything I'm missing over in the main Peter-centric Spider-Man book right now. I've been a fan of Cody Ziegler's work for a while now, not just his comic stuff, but his TV stuff too, and I'm really interested to see what he can bring to the Spider-Man character. Especially because if this first issue is any indication, it looks like he is actively going for a lot more slow burn character-focused approach. The art's solid, this issue also serves as a really solid jumping on point for maybe people who fell off the solid in a min run like me, but definitely wanted to come back to Spider-Man, I think this will be a good issue to get you back on that horse. Overall, I think I feel comfortable giving this one an 8 out of 10. Good, good stuff. Hey there everyone, it's your old pal Cave Jewel, and if you're seeing me right now, that means you watch to the end of the video, which I am very appreciative of. It really helps drive engagement and retention and all that other good YouTube stuff. So does liking and commenting. Wink, wink. If you like my content too, you should check out my Patreon page. We just redid all the tiers, so there's a ton of great rewards. You can become a patron for as little as a dollar a month, and well, it would just really help me out. It's never expected, but always appreciated. So until next time, everyone, I've been Cape Joel, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.